Uh, welcome to the hour of restoration. This is Thank the you. first uh, in July. We have this uh, uh, hour of restoration uh, worship service. And uh, uh, today is a, a new month, new theme. Uh, godliness is contentment. So okay. we are waiting for the, uh, our speaker today. But uh, while we are waiting, and uh, we want to offer a start with a prayer, a join me prayer. Yeah. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, Heavenly Father. Father, we are so grateful for this incredible opportunity that we can come together across the globe, transcending the national barriers and, and uh, transcending the uh, time and space that we come together to worship and uh, uh, receive the, your words. And uh, really, the, uh, in, this is an incredible time of the year and the time of the history that we feel that uh, time is very near, that your presence and that your arrival is very new. Heavenly Father, we come here today in uh, new month, July. We are focusing on the scripture, the godliness is contentment. We know that you have a lot to speak to us but unless we clear our mind and open our mind and open our heart, you cannot talk to each one of us. Please let us really open our heart and open our mind and be ready to be your uh, servant and your sons and daughters and to be obedient to your words, Heavenly Father. Uh, thank you once again, and uh, you guide, you've been guiding us and uh, bring us together. I pray this together in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I thought we're still praying. I really want to use this opportunity to welcome everyone in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Man. I want to give, I thank God for God. I really give God the glory. I don't want to take this opportunity for granted. I want thanking the Lord, the Holy Spirit. I thank God. I thank Jesus Christ, the Savior of my soul. I thank God for the grace to be a carrier of his word. And Lord, I thank you for this opportunity. And I want to use this opportunity to thank the uh, ACLC platform which uh, is giving opportunity to people to uh, bring out their gifts and their talents. Thank you very much. God bless you. And may the Lord, as we have prayed, may the Lord bless this platform in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. And I want to really, I'm so excited uh, to have um, seen Dr. Folomisho Akini from Canada. Thank you very much for accepting this invitation. And I want to thank Evangelist Ngozi from Nigeria, oh, my wow. daughter. My thank you life. very much for accepting the invitation. And I see Osamu Yime. Osamu Yime is my daughter. That's my last born. Ah, I thank you oh, for God. accepting this opportunity. Thank you, yeah. uh, Reverend Alfred Aroma. Thank mm -hmm. you for accepting this invitation. And everyone coming up to come and you know, I know, Reverend Olubi, everybody, uh, those that I have not seen. Uh -huh. Some people told me they are going to come on, I'm not going to stay there, I don't know how they are going to do it. But uh -huh. I really, I'm really happy, I'm really excited that I could just send a text message and you people responded from Nigeria, from Canada. May the Lord bless all of you in Jesus' name. And uh, I, I'm saying, Sister Jeannie, thank you. Thank God for every one of you. Uh, Reverend uh, Galvan, I thank you. Reverend Galvan is, uh, they, are our for, they are our fathers, church fathers in New York. So thank you very much, sir, for availing yourself this evening. I pray that the Almighty God will bless each and every one of you in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. The topic before us this evening 
And uh, let me, I've already, thank you, Reverend Gabriel, for oh, God using you, and, uh, and uh, uh, David Akamatsu, Mommy Julia, I will really appreciate you. God bless you all in Jesus' name. The topic before us is uh, uh, a topical topic, like I what I've been uh, looking at, and um, it's so topical that I believe that the Holy Spirit will uh, speak to each and every one of us. I that is going to bring the word and those that are listening to my presentation this evening, may we all, we will not be, this word will not stand as to condemn us on the last day in Jesus' name, but that it will make us to go and be a better Christian, to work on, that, on ourselves in every area that we know that we are lacking, we will work on ourselves, both the preacher and those that are <laughs> the, particip the participant. All of us are going to work on ourselves because the topic is very, very topical and practical. So may the Lord, the Spirit of God help us in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. And I was glad that I <laughs> that I was given the opportunity to go and really study and know the mind of God concerning this topic. So as we continue, I want to read uh, First Timothy, uh, First Timothy, chapter six. I'm reading from six to nine. The topic is godliness with contentment. Amen. Godliness with contentment. And the text is taken from 1 Timothy chapter 6 from verses 3 to 9. I read. Six to nine, first Timothy six. But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world. Uh -oh. Reverend Margaret, can you unmute yourself? You are muted. Lord of Jesus, so mm -hmm. uh, you've not been hearing me. Continue, continue, we're hearing you now. Now I can hear. I'm sorry, but godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world and it is certain we cannot, we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, let us be dear with content. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts. We draw men in destruction and perdition. As I have said before, I said the topic before us is godliness with contentment. And our test was taken from 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 3 to verse uh, 6 to 9. I'm sorry about that if you were not hearing me uh, since I've been ministering. Uh, and uh, Godliness, godliness and contentment is the key to spiritual growth and personal fulfillment. We should honor God and center our lives on him. And we should be content 
with what God is doing in our lives. So two words are before us, godliness and contentment. So what is godliness? We are going to, we are going to look at two, two words, godliness and contentment. What is godliness? Godliness is seeking for the kingdom of God and his righteousness. According to the Bible, Matthew chapter 6, 33, verse 33, and it reads, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. To seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, it means to turn to him first for help in anything we desire. To fill your thoughts with his, with God's own desire. To take his character for your pattern. To take God's character for your pattern. And to serve and obey him in everything. Seeking God first in everything. Hallelujah. Amen. There are things that are important to us. It may be people, objects, it may be our goals. These, all these are competing for our priority. People, what some, we may come to this life when you come to this life, you want to have a family. You want to be married. When you are married, even before you marry, you want to have a home. Because you must have a more home before you said you want to go and marry a wife and bring the wife to your home. Objects. After having a home, you are thinking, see people, you are thinking of having children. Then objects, you are thinking of having a car, no, a good car or a sizable car that may help you and your family. Goals, you are thinking of achieving education, business. All these things compete as we are in the in this world serving god alone for our priority but because we are looking at this subject godliness tonight in all this that we are looking at in all this we want to be everything that we want to be everything we desire to be must conform with the desire of god Now, the first God desire that we turn to him first in everything for help. Matthew eleven twenty eight, twenty eight 28, 28 to 30 says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heaven legend, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. So the desire of God is that we should turn to him for help. We want to marry, we should turn to God for help. We want to have a home, a house of our own. Anything we want to do, we want to go to school, we want to have certificates upon certificates. We have to turn to God. God, are you allowing me to, what do you want me to do? It must, it must conform with the desire of God for your life. You want to good, go into a business. You have to ask God first. Is this the kind of business I should go into? 
if God leads you to go into that business, you will succeed. There may be there may be problem in, alongside, but you will succeed because He is the one that has led you. Proverbs chapter three, Proverbs uh, Proverbs three five to six says, "Trust in the Lord with all thy heart, and lean not on your own understanding." For in all thy ways acknowledge him, for he shall direct your path. So God is, if God directs your path to choose a career, then it is in his desire, because he knows the purpose he wants to use it for. If he leads you to choose a, 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 a education, you want to, whatever you want to be, some parents will force their children to be what they want them to be, but not what God wants them to go to school to go and learn. So many people are out of school, no job. Many people are out of school, they finish one degree, they cannot continue. There are people that have gone to school and they go and learn what they, are, they, 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 they finish from their school and God will say, that is, I don't want you to work with your certificate. Conforming with the desires of God. I don't want to dwell to it, but I have an example of that. To the glory of God, our first son graduated as an engineer, production engineering. But God has already told him when he was in school, this is where I want you to work with me. This is where I want you to work for me. You are going to serve. So today, he's working in Christ's embassy. And everybody start telling him, why is Nosa not in a, a oil company? Why is he not doing that? Why is he not going there? He's focused, doing what God wants him to do. Because that is what God wants him to do. You want to marry. Have you gone to God to pray and know if that woman is the woman that God wants? God, God, will, order, God will not choose for you. But God can order your step, as we have read in Proverbs 3, 5 to 6. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So God wants you to help, it wants you to turn to him for help in any area of that you need help. You can read further. First Peter 5, 6 to 7 can tell you that. Romans 8, 28 to 29. You can then, God's desire for us that we should prosper. You can see, you can read that in Jeremiah 29, 11 to 14. Philippians 4, 7 to 6 to 7, if you are writing down. Zephaniah 3, 17. This topic is very topical. It's not what we should just come and sit down and listen. I would have encouraged you to take pen and paper and really put some things down because mm -hmm. I am really grateful to God for this topic. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then, secondly, we said to fill your heart, to fill your thoughts with his desire. What is the desire of God? Have you ever thought of the desire of God? God desire that all men should be saved, according to 1 Timothy 2, 4. He said, who will have all men to be saved and to come unto him unto the knowledge of truth? God desires for the world is that all men should be saved. Amen. So, and that is our, that should be our desire too, as leaders, as pastors, as Christians, when we are already saved by God, when we are born again, God desired that we should go and tell others about the good news. So it's not only the evangelists that should preach the gospel, the pastor, the apostle, the pope. No, if you are born again, you, are, you have accepted Christ as Lord and Savior, the desire of God is that 
you should go and tell others. He desired that all men should be saved. So we will do our part in prayers, intercession for all men, for all people that are in authority, for kings. Do we remember our villages to pray for them, to pray for all those kings, all those lords in our home and in our villages? This today, when I was going through this, I have it in mind that I will be praying for my Oba now. I don't pray for him before I pray for Nigeria, but I don't specifically pray for my Oba. So I will be praying for my Oba because God desires that every one of them should be saved and that they should be, they, they should succeed. So we should be praying for them. Those unbelievers outside, the Muslims, are we praying for them? Do we do we do we do do we evangelize them? Are we having com do we are we comfortable to to preach to the Hindus? Those the Ekakais, Ekakais, the great messengers. Are we comfortable to preach to them? Are we comfortable to tell them about the Lord Jesus? Godliness with contentment. That's what we are treating. So we must conform with the desire of God. God desire that all men should be saved. Praise the Lord. May the Amen. Lord help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Second Peter 3, 9 has told us that the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men can slackness, but is not suffering to us, Lord, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to the to repentance. So God wants all every man to be saved, the desires of God. The Ezekiel 18, 23, have I any pleasure at all that the wicked should die, says the Lord God, and not that he should return from his ways and live? So God was asking that question. So he wants us to go to those people that we feel that they are wicked, the witches and wizards. Today, I said, I'm going to change my prayers. I used to pray that, uh, I used to pray, Esther 22, 18, suffer not a wish to live, the wish should die. But God wants them to repent. If we can pray for them, and see them repenting, God, will, heaven will be happy. Mm. It's the joy of God for them to repent and live their evil way. Amen. 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 Godliness with contentment. That's what we are looking at. And we are looking at what is godliness now. So, and also, Matthew 23, 37, you can read that on your own. Thirdly, to take his character for your pattern. What is godliness? Godliness is taking God's character for your pattern. What is God's character? The Bible has made us to know that God is love. God is love. God is gracious. God is compassionate. He's slow to anger. God is faithful. God is forgiving. Character of God. God is love. First John 4, 8 says, He that loveth not, knoweth not God, for God is love. It is love that will make you to pray for your enemies. It is love. Because the love that God has for us it's not the philo, the philo love, or the, the, it is the agape. The agape love will make you to forgive others and pray for your enemies. And that is the reason, I don't know, for when I was looking at this, I don't know, maybe that is the reason why I, I forgive people. I quickly say I am sorry to people. People, thank God, people that knows me from home are on this platform this evening. I, I can tell sorry to a, a, a three-year-old. 
if you tell me that I hurt you, but if you didn't tell, if I don't know, I won't. I may even look at your face and say that you are not the way I'm looking at you. You is not. It's like it's not. What is happening? Have I offended you? I may ask you that. God wants us to forgive ourselves, to forgive our neighbor, to forgive all that. God forgives. That that God is love. It is His loving kindness that makes us have that grace. God is gracious. God is merciful. In everything we do, we should taste God's character as our pattern. If we don't love, if we only love those that love us, then we are not walking in godliness. That is what he says. Amen. If we only love those that love us, we only love the people that are in our assembly. We only love those, our members that we see. We don't love those others. We don't pray for other people. Then we don't have love. If we don't pray for our enemies, because some people feel that it is flesh and blood that is their enemies. But the book of Ephesians chapter 6, 10 to 12, I told us that we don't, we are not working against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness in high places. So those are the enemies. They are, they are not that sister, that brother that you have issues together. No. Quickly go, resolve, and forgive. Then you are working in godliness. Praise God. Hallelujah. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Amen. John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So it is the love of God that God has for the whole world that make him to give Jesus Christ as a lamb that was to be slaughtered. Christ died for each and every one of all. That is why we have the opportunity to, to no, to be born again. We have that opportunity to have that um, relationship with God. The relationship with God is through Jesus Christ. It's not true. It's not because I am good. It's not because I have money. It's not because I have power. It's not because of anything. It's because of Jesus. So it is Jesus Christ that God is seeing, is looking at, or is seeing in us. Praise the Lord. So, and most times we quote that verse in Galatians chapter 20. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. But Christ lives me. If we are living the life of Christ, if we are really living the life of Christ, Galatians 2.20, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. If we are living, if we were crucified, if we are crucified in Christ Jesus, and we are living for Christ, we should be conformed with his desire to love our enemies, to love those that hate us, to, to, to love those that despisefully use us. There was a time in my life, God asked me to be praying for those that I know that they have despisefully, despisefully used me. They have, they have taken advantage of me. God sat me down and said, be praying for them. Those that took advantage of me, they took advantage of my simplicity. They took advantage of everything about my life. God sat me down and said, be praying for them. And I started praying for them. The one that I was given opportunity to call, I called them. Please, can you forgive me? And I forgive you too. Are we having such people in our life today? Please, I encourage you to do the same. May the Lord bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. It is very good. It will make you to become God's friend. It mm. will make you not to fear again. When you don't have any animosity against anybody in your heart, 
you are praying for people that you think that this person has really hurt me. You pray for that person. You will see how you will be free from all accusation. May the Lord bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. Then the second part is contentment. So, I will, you know, the word of God is a mirror. So I, that's why I said we should please write these things down. You should go and read it. How best are you doing this? How best do you turn to God for help first? Or you go and do what you want to do. And when you see that the issues, there are problems, before you now turn to God and come and say, God, please help me, help me. And later you now say, and why, if God loves me, why did this thing happen to me? Did you tell him first before you go and do what you went to go and do? That is what you should ask. You, it's a choice. He can't force you. God does not force anybody. He, he will let you choose what you want to choose. And your choice will not either make you, break you, or make you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Your choice in life will either break you or make you. So that is why we have to go to him first and ask him. Contentment. Philippians 4, 11 to 13. Quickly, I read. Not that I speak in respect of wants, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am, Therewith to be content. I know both to be abased and I know how to abound everywhere and in all things. I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Amen. Amen. That was the testimony of Paul. Testimony of Paul. I call it testimony. It was his own testimony. Here, Paul was content because he could see life from God's point of view. He focused on what he was supposed to do, not what he felt he should have. Yes, we may have a need in our life. Some of us, we, we say until we are married, before we will go and do God's assignment, until we buy a car, until we have a job, until we have a home, before we will take up God's assignment, until we do what God wants us to do. Paul did not do that. Paul didn't do that. He had his priority straight and was grateful for everything God had given him. He had detached himself from the non-essentials. There are non-essentials. God give us the essentials. There are non-essentials. There are things you can do without before you go before doing the will of God. And as you are doing the will of God, God will add those things unto you. That is where we read. He said, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Matthew 6, 33. And all these things shall be added unto you. All these things that we desire, every other thing will be added unto you. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Have I offended somebody? No. Forgive me. <laughs> okay. Concentrate. He concentrate. He he you we should concentrate, focus mm. on the eternal God's assignment, how God's kingdom can be enriched, how it can be populated, how people will be saved, how we can bring people to the house of God, how we can teach God people. We should concentrate on that. Often the desire for more or better possession is really a longing to fill an empty space in one's life. Yes, it's true. 
To what are you drawn when you feel empty inside? When you feel it's, it, we know you think you need more, you feel empty. To what are you drawn? How can you find true contentment? The answer lies in your perspective, one, two, your priority, two, three, and your source of power. Jesus Christ is our source of power, according to as we have read in Galatians 2.20. Because we are the life we live, we are living in him. So he's our source of strength, is our source of power. And because he's our source of power, it is in him that we put, that we find those things that we are doing. We should put our priority right. We should be content in any situation we face. Paul knew how to be content, whether he had much or little. The secret was drawing upon Christ's power for strength. He goes to the Bible. We, we say we are Christians. Eh? We don't read our Bible. At times, you don't pick your Bible to read in a week, in three days, in two days. Don't you look at it. When you don't read, when you don't eat in a day, how do you feel? You will not have strength to do anything. That is how it is. When you don't go to your source, your source of power is the scripture, is the word of God, which through there you will know how to do what God wants you to do. Amen. Amen. When we have great needs or wants, we should not be discontented. No. We should be grateful. A grateful attitude. We should be grateful. Have grateful. We have that attitude of thanking God in the little that we have, the small that we have, and he will give us the other one. We should not be, because at that time, some people, that's the time we will be complaining, that's the time we feel disappointed, that's the time we'll be asking question or question or question. Amen. Amen. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Amen. But learn to rely on God's promises. Yes. God's promises never fail. Yes. He has still spoken to you Learn to go to the word of God and read about his promises and you will gain strength. And Christ's power to help us to be content. If you always want more, ask God to remove that desire and teach you contentment in every situation. There are some of us, even when we are full, we are still asking more, asking more. Ask, that's why you suffer constipation. When you eat too much, when you are not supposed to eat what you are eating, you suffer constipation. You go to bed weak. You wake up weak. That is still the same thing as it is in food. In everything, it is moderation. The Bible said, let your moderation be known unto all men. So it is moderation in everything that we have. You have bought one car. You, another, you, you, you want to have the latest one. You want to have the latest one. You want to have the latest one. And you say you are a Christian, judge yourself so that you will not be judged. And the house of God is there looking for money to do one thing or the other. You don't think it concerns you. Some of us does not even pay tithes because we believe that pastors are the ones using the tithes. But you go on, you want to buy a bada 1005. You want to sew another one, good one. You buy suit or pursuit, you buy shoes or shoes, you, 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 when you are in New York, you see the craziness of shopping every, every day, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, you see people going from one shop or the other. I've never seen any city that shop like you New Yorkers. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Amen. I don't know whether it's in another city like that, but I have experienced New York old. They go from one shop to the other, looking for where things are. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> hey, want to see the ocean. Praise the Lord. Come on, God, He will all you know, know where I said, let us know, let us remove that desire of asking more, 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 more. Let us thank Him for what he has already given us, that little that he has already given us. There are what uh, my dearly beloved Pastor Chris, I love that man so much because he has touched my life. See, 
He said, there are gimme, 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 gimme Christians. Gimme, gimme, gimme. You don't ask God, what can I do for you? Where will I go for you? What do I go? Where will I go for? Oh, you have not said that to ask God. What needs is in the church that I should make? What needs is in the, my neighbor's life? In the neighborhood, there are people that have not eaten. What needs is in their life that I should meet? No, it is gimme, 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 gimme. Gimme, 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 Christians, says Pastor Chris Oyakilome. Philippians 4 19 says, But my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Trust God in everything. Our attitudes, appetite, should change from wanting, wanting, wanting everything to accepting, wanting, wanting, wanting. But we should accept the provision and the power to live for him. His provision, that is needs. He knows our need. He knows what we should have that we will not suffer kwashoko. He knows what we should have that we should not die. He knows what we should add that we should continue. Our good heads is there. God is ready to, 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 make, to give us good heads. Most times, it is the food that we eat that gives us sickness. It's after we have eaten those food, you go into one restaurant or the other. You will not stay at home to cook your food by yourself. You don't know what they put in those food that you are eating from one restaurant to the other. Then by the time you eat it, you become sick. You cannot enter kitchen to cook by yourself and know what is in your pot is a disease may the Lord help us in Jesus name Amen so if you want to live in good health cook yourself know, yes. what, know what quantity of salt you put quantity of all the condiments or whatever that you put know what you are eating so you Lazy. will see that you will live in good health may the Lord bless us in Jesus name Hallelujah. Father God I want to thank you this evening Thank you, Lord. Amen. I saw, <laughs> Lord, I give you glory. Give you glory, Lord. Yes. As we yes. all honor you. you. We, give you glory, we give you glory, Lord. As, as we all honor you. You, you, you are one. Lord. You are the Lord. You are the Lord. You are the Lord. Everlasting Father, in the name of Jesus, I have spoken just what you put in my heart to speak. I ask, so oh God, that this word today will not stand against the speaker and the hearers in Jesus' name. But it will help us to go back to our drawing board and to go and read your word and know your desire for us and for the whole world. So that at the end, because the Bible says godliness with contentment is a great gain. Help us, oh God, that at the end, we will have gain in all that we have traded on this earth. We will love one another. We will serve one another. We will, we will be helpful, help us to others. That means our help. Because the Bible says that God is love and love is of God. And everyone that knoweth God must love for his love. Thank you, Father. Blessed be thy name. The, John, eh, 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 eh. First John uh, 7 and 8 said, Beloved, let us love one another, love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God, and know of God. He that loveth not, knoweth not God, for God is love, God is love, beloved. Let us love one another, First John 4, 7 and 8. We pray, Lord, that you will put your love in our hearts. And the song says, count your blessings and name them one by one. And it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Help us each day to count our blessings so that we can be grateful 
and be content with what you have given unto us, that we might be godly children and perfect children that you want us to be, as it was at the beginning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Wow, what a message. What a message. So uh, at this point, uh, if you have uh, any uh, questions uh, to the speaker, or maybe at some point to, to be elaborated more, uh, please uh, express yourself. You can raise your hand, open the mic, and you can say that any questions or any point that to be elaborated by the speaker. Reverend Orbe. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank God for our mommy. Thank God for the Our Lord. I'm not going to waste you. I just want to add some things. When she was talking, I, I, I just want to godliness and then always willing to be like God. Trying to subject every action, every decision, every step we want to take, including our promises. I also see that God in that work in the name of Jesus Christ. Different trans of the body. Let me read from different versions that I have here. Okay. From amplified part, say the amplified Bible say, let your character or moral disposition be free from love of money, including greed, avarice, loss, and craving for earthly possessions. Mm. and be satisfied with your present circumstance and with what you have. Yes. For he, God himself has said, mm. I will not in any way fail you nor give, you, give, give up on you mm. or leave you without support. I will not, I will not degree you heavily nor fatigue nor let you down. Relax nor relax my glory. That's amplified. He must say, don't be scared to get Somebody, 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 Mm. and be content with what you have because mm. I said never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. Mm. The new translation says stay away from the love of money be satisfied mm. with what you have for God has said I will never fail you, I will never forsake you. Mm. New King James and say let your conduct be without covetousness be content with such things that you have mm. for he himself has said I will never leave you nor Forsake you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you very much. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The, the, I want to ask a question. And, uh, the question is because I thank God that majority of us here we are ministers of God and leaders in our various uh, churches. Praise the Lord. You know this platform is non-denominational, so that is the beautiful aspect of it. So the question I want to ask is that as ministers, 
why is it that we 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 create for uh, you know two cars three cars you know two houses four houses you know want to grab this want to grab this and yes why is it so praise the lord hallelujah amen agreed Bless the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Jenny, <Genius> speak. <laughs> Jenny, Jenny, speak. <laughs> yes. your if you are speaking, introduce yourself and where you are speaking from. Then we... Jenny. Yes. Ah, Jenny. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. I, I just want to greet every I, I all the you? dignitary and man of God and woman of God. I just want to um, greet you in the wonderful name of Jesus. Yes. Oh, you have to unmute yourself, Jenny. Jenny, yourself. Yes, yes. So I'm like, your pastor asked a question. Why are so um the pastors and the ministers, why some of us ask so many things? To me, it's greed. You know, it's 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 greed because um sometimes when you look into some churches, you find um like you have some pastors and some people, some leaders. They be greedy for, they have two cars, two houses, three houses, like some that I see come on. And, and some of the, and, and you have brethren inside there who need some place to live. And for them to open up a door to even accommodate them for a, a two night or so, they would never, <laughs> they would never, but they will take a little offering and a little tithes. Cause I see, I have seen men of God Right now, when you look at some of them, have how many airplanes flying? They have their own air base and all those things. Mm -hmm. Yes, the Bible says we, our Father own riches. He own the wealth of this earth, and it's for us. But you have some of some of us are really greedy. Mm -hmm. Don't have no godliness in us. Godliness is compassion, love, caring, sharing, and some you have some christian I, I i would just i won't say believers some christians they don't have no compassion in them and yes they say they serve god they have and more than what they have i am talking of experience i used to attend the church in new york yeah i want pastors what i'm talking about I'm talking about some pastors too, because I know pastors. I don't want to call their names and line here. No, no, no. You don't but I know pastors. I know pastors because I was in a church in New York. I'm not talking about the, the African church that I was in. I was in a church in New York, a multi um, culture church in New York. And there was a lady from Nigeria. She and her husband, you know, break up. And they had two kids, and it was in the height of the winter. I don't know if you guys remember that winter. I'm not talking about the game. So the height winter that we have some years ago, I think it was 2008 or so, but there was a heavy winter. And she was, they were split with some other people. They shared that apartment with some, some other people. They sell the apartment. And that lady, the, the person that sold the apartment to turn off the light and the eat. So she had two kids and herself in that whole blistering winter. And she happens to come to the church I was in. I guess the deacon met her one night. They put her up into a hotel one night. And she had no place. She had no money. She had nowhere to go. And that lady be searching. For, and there were so many churches there. And not one person would assist that lady. It was about <laughs> minutes to 12 that night. I was asleep. And my phone rang. And I woke up. And it was one of my friend, a church sister of mine that goes to the same church. And when my phone ring, I, nobody answering, but I know I heard a conversation. They were trying to find out where to drop that lady, somebody, a deep one in the church. He has a huge house. And he and his wife and his two kids. And they have about six or seven more empty rooms. But they were trying to find a place to drop her. She was so freezing that they put her in the van and turned the heat on just for her to come back to. And I'm like, why are they calling? I'm like, 
this is not right. And I call him, I was answering the phone. So I called the deacon and he pick his phone and I say, what is going on? I asked my sister why she called me and not picking her phone. She said, I didn't call you. She said, I never call you. So I said, what is going on? They said, they have this lady in their van. She, they want to drop, you can't take her home. Okay. Cut the story short. God let me wake up. He woke me up. I said, bring her to my house. It was me and my daughter in New York. And we bring that woman to our house. Six months she was in my house. Hallelujah. People in that church has house, every one of them. I didn't have a house, I was renting. Hallelujah. So Hallelujah. you are some greedy Christian. I'm on the phone. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you very much. I think uh, we, we, we saw that there was a need. You know, she did not just uh, saw that need, she attended to it. Even though there are people who have houses, they have spaces in their houses, but they cannot even release it. And uh, which is it? Which is the truth? Praise the Lord. Most of our it, it, it happens in America. It happens in some other place all over everywhere. The world, all over the whole world. But what we are saying here is that as ministers of God, when you come across such situations, please do something. Do something. It will come for you. It will come for me in eternity. Because the essence of teachings like this is for us to go out there and practicalize it. Be the one to practicalize it. Because you discover that don't be surprised. By the time we finish the program today now, tomorrow a need, some such a some uh, such a need will come. And what God wants, God wants to test you to see whether the message you had today is just for your hearing. And not for doing. It's for hearing and also for doing. And God will grant us that grace in Jesus' name. Because Amen. we have discovered that we must we must try as, much as possible to deprogram ourselves from excuses. From excuses. Sometimes you may not even be, you may not have the opportunity to really help that person the way you want to help, but you have somebody else who can also help. Please go ahead and do it. We come for you in eternity. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. Praise the Lord. I, I just want to say something, Pastor. Um, in helping someone, you never know who you help. It could be an angel. It could be an angel you help. Mm -hmm. Because I'm telling you, meeting that lady was a blessing. She taught me how to pray. Mm -hmm. That lady lived in prayer. So you never know who you're going to help. God bless you. Oh, Praise, God. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise Hallelujah. Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. I just want to congratulate you guys. This is a good beginning. I want to thank God for sir. my sister. Sir, can you can you introduce yourself, sir? And oh, you sorry. I'm Pastor Kunshu Akini. I pastor a church in Canada. Oh, God Canada. bless you, sir. In Fishna, Ontario. Okay, now. Ontario, Canada. Okay, I'm a close friend to the minister, and uh, I'll be joining from time to time and encourage people to join. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. She's a close friend, a close friend to my late wife. They pray together. They are prayer partners. Mm -hmm. They pray together, so we bring more people to the platform by. Grace of God, Amen. And love of God, God bless you. The Lord will let this work grow in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Congratulations, all of you that have come today. You keep coming, Jesus. Name. Amen. 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 Thank you for the message. We love it, and the Lord will continue to bless you. Amen. 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 Thank you. So, thank you very much. So we 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 thank we, you, Doctor Lord. Emily, yes, hello. Sir. Yes, sir. Reverend Emily, Alfred. This is uh, Alfred. Yes, yes. I want to just uh, chip in a little word there. First and foremost, I want to thank God for the grace of all my sister who has just ministered. I want to encourage her. That was a very good administration. It was very presented and very articulate. Mm -hmm. uh, the topic under discussion is very, very important and relevant to current dispensation. 
the question you ask is very, very important. I think from my own perspective, why pastors, ministers behave that way is because of lack of contentment. And this is why this topic is very important. Many of us are not content with what we have, we have that spirit of acquisition. We, we, we are just like the people in the world. One of the few that we have arrived where you begin to accumulate. I thank God for our sister Jenny. She said it all. You see, you, you, you keep on accumulating. Even the people you are shepherding, you are ministering to, mm. they lack so many things, but you are not able to give mm. because of that spirit of acquisition and accumulation. It's not a good thing for a minister of God. That mm. is working contrary to the teaching of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. I remember in one of the parables, he said, if you, if, if you have two calls and somebody is asking, mm. release. But today you find many pastors, ministers, in mm. quotes, they find it difficult to release. The spirit of compaction is not in them. There's something in the Bible I love so much. This time Jesus Christ performed miracles, the Bible will say he has compassion. Mm. See, compassion is a flowing law. Mm. This is what is missing now. Mm. You see, ministers, they don't have compaction. They mm. all accumulate mansions. They have jeep. They have it's, I'm not saying it's bad, but yeah. it's not a good thing. It's contrary to the teaching of our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm. The Bible says we are in the world. We are not of the world. Mm. See, this topic says, if you look at the, 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 the beginning, you see, we came to this world with nothing. Mm. And you are going out of this world with nothing. I've never seen. In fact, a few days ago, I was talking to somebody, say, have you ever seen a man that dies and is buried with the children, with the cars, with the houses? He goes alone. Nothing. Mm -hmm. All those things are left behind. Mm -hmm. Sometimes those that you are going to bequeath them to, they don't even know the value. They are all that wasted. Is. Yes, wasted accumulation. So I really want to thank my sister for the way she has actually exposed the topic. It's quite good and very educative and interesting. Let's keep it up. We need to address ourselves. We ministers. It's very, very important. You have people in your church, they are lacking in so many areas, mm. yet you are riding in two cars. Have you ever seen somebody riding two cars at the same time? If you do Have that, I'll be mad. <laughs> Have you ever seen somebody sleeping? Yes. Sleeping on, this, on two beds at the same time. That would be madness. Have you ever seen somebody wearing two pairs of shoes at the same time? That would be madness. They will have people, they will have chains of shoes. And they are not even using them. Yeah. I, will, I, will, I will stop with this. If you have clothing in your wardrobe mm -hmm. and you have never used it for six months, mm -hmm. I bet you, brother, you don't need those things. Keep them out. Mm -hmm. But yeah. most pastors, they keep on accumulating the latest suit and whatever. And their members are coming in that are close. They don't yeah, even I give it are. out. I it's think so we need to address this issue. I think I'll just rest my case. I want to thank oh, you God. for the platform. It's, it's a very good thing. And uh, we need to really begin to discuss and address this penitent issue. We need to show compassion, especially to yep. those that we are ministering to. It's very important. That was exactly what Jesus did. If we are ministers, we should live by the example of yeah. our Lord Jesus Christ. I'm following his steps. I think yeah, I will stop there. Steps, Thank you so yes. much. God bless you. God bless Thank you. God bless you. You know, to, to buttress your point, he said one thing. You see, that have you seen anybody that dies and they bury him with their house? Uh, yeah. Oh, even with money. <laughs> yes. Hallelujah. I remember, I remember so uh, 2011. Praise the Lord. We, you know, some of you who are here, you know my wife very well. Uh, you know, and God gave us a car. In fact, through a Muslim. And then that car was put in her name. I assume I love that car. She loved that car. Praise the Lord. And anywhere she wants to go, in fact, I prefer, you know, taking her. But where am I going to? Is that before you know it, she was, she was called to glory. Praise the Lord. I was not looking, looking at the car. Do you know that car cannot enter it for so, for so many months? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. She Hallelujah. Loves, she loves this car. But yet, on the bed day, the day, the day of burial, we cannot put the car inside there. No. <laughs> she loves the car, I'm telling you. She loves the car. Yes, yeah, so true. We cannot push that car into the grave. <laughs> Hallelujah. And then the message that came that day was that vanity upon vanity. All is vanity. All is vanity. Vanity, my brother. That's it. That is vanity. 
praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the Lord. Can I talk? God bless you, ma'am. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, thank you. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is uh, Beatrice. I'm calling from New York. I just want to check in just something in the very little, and uh, which is affecting everybody. Uh, the, the thing is self-centeredness. Mm -hmm. We are so, it's me, 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 me. Yes, and, and if Myself. it is not you, it is you and your family, you mm -hmm. and your family. Your family. Mm -hmm. A lot of us, we are not putting other people into consideration. Mm -hmm. We are not considering all that the situation other people are passing through. We just want to get from them. We say, okay, we, somebody that doesn't have what you have, mm -hmm. and the person is giving you a car. Mm -hmm. Just as somebody said, when I was listening to the man, we may say this man is not really a Christian. The church that he was pastoring is not a, it's not a um, Pentecostal, mm -hmm. but he said something that is very, very meaningful. When I was listening to, her, to him in the night, mm -hmm. he said that if, because it was an interview, mm -hmm. he said, if somebody, he says, God has me to give you a car. Mm -hmm. He said, you first of all ask that person, is your mother has a car? Mm -hmm. You are yourself, how many do you have? Mm -hmm. And if the person say, okay, my mother doesn't have, or I have only one. He said, okay, go and give that one to your mother first. Mm. Take care of your family. Mm. Take care of your family because before you give it to me, mean that you are coming to give the, God says you should give the car to, I have one. My mm. wife has one. Mm -hmm. Then your mother doesn't have any. Mm. Say, okay, by right, as a pastor, okay, now I can give it to your mother. Go and give it to your parents. Mm. You see? Yeah. But many of us, we are, so, we are so concerned about our own life. We are living in New York. We are living in America. We are trying to build house in Nigeria. For what? Are you sleeping there? Are you are you sleep? You sleep in America and you sleep in Nigeria. The money that is supposed to use to help people here. We, one one day God was telling me that we have enough soil here to plant to plant to, to plant seed yes. in America. Here yeah. we have enough soil even to plant seed. Mm -hmm. Before you even think of going back home. So when you remove that one, mm -hmm. you remove I, 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 I. Your eyes will be open to be able to help people, especially we are talking about the people of God, okay? The mm -hmm. pastors, the, 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 the women of God. Okay, if you remove I from your perspective, you will see that God will open your eyes to see your member, even in the church, that doesn't it's have any, true. and are still struggling, even to pay tithes, and still struggling mm -hmm. to pay offering, and you are not asking, how are you coping? Let's start from our grassroots. A lot of us, we are guilty, we are guilty, we are guilty, yeah. not to even yeah. now move it to people that are buying jets. Mm. <laughs> Amen. Me, I don't, yeah. I don't bother myself. Mm -hmm. I don't bother myself at people buying jet, buying this, because as long as I know that they did not force me to bring my money for them to buy jet, that is their own business. For, and for you that are giving your money to buy jet, I don't care if that is what God said that you use to propagate the gospel. Good. But let's take care of ourselves. Let's take care of those people that doesn't have. Bible says, have any uh, right. Godliness with contentment is a great yeah, game. A great game. Yep. 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 Godliness with contentment is a great game. Powerful. We are going to, Powerful. Even, even winning so a lot of mm. us we are we are we hold we mm. hold witnessing. Mm. We hold it. You have it to yourself. You can't share it. Mm. You can't mm. share the gospel to people around you. You think yeah. that these people they are contented. They they are they have enough. No, who told you? Let's let's start from there. When you yeah. minister in word, minister in material too. Mm. Check their need. Many people yes. they, they don't have food to eat, even in this country that we are in. Did yes. you minister to them? Mm. God Almighty will help us to Amen. remove I Amen. from Amen. our life Amen. and put Jesus Amen. in the center. Amen. You, we cannot see Amen. We cannot see two things here now. Number one, greediness. Which uh, self centeredness self that we give back to even this eye. Uh, our mommy said one thing he said, You are in America and you are building house in Nigeria, <laughs> First of all, we are in Nigeria. and not just small house, but bigger house to show that I have arrived. Can you sleep here? The answer is no. I know somebody who is in America right now, he built this house, I think, completed it in 2012. Never go in there, it's a big house in one acre. He built that house. Oh, brothers and sisters, do you know that as I'm talking to you now, 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 you can step in that house maybe once. 
Mm. And when I saw that house, I said, bro, you build house for mutis and wizards. <laughs> that's what I told him. I said, you build house for mutis and wizards. I said, we're going to stay. <laughs> we're going to stay here. Praise the Lord. Do you know that he put somebody there? This is a lesson to all of us. He put somebody there to be living in just a small part in that house. The person now went to Asaba mm -hmm. to go and take it to go and the house, the house as a collateral for loan. It was God that saved him. The man will have sold the house. And it was here in US here. God will deliver all of us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. There are so many to there are so many things to say about next week is another great day, and God will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Please let's please. Let's invite as many, as many. We need to educate ourselves. It's not a platform Please. to blame anybody, but to educate ourselves. And God will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Reverend, Reverend Emily, please um, permit me to recognize somebody. I've been seeing, okay. I saw daddy's gallery. I don't know if that is my own daddy. Okay. I think it's my daddy Aslam. Is that, okay, daddy Aslam. Is daddy Aslam there? My daddy Aslam. Unmute yourself, please, sir. Daddy. <laughs> Is that Daddy Aslam? Okay. 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 Um, okay. okay. Hello. Is that Daddy Aslam Uguayi? It's not here right now. Mm. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, everybody. Okay, uh, you are the one, uh, sir. I recognize you and I thank you. I appreciate you. I just sent you the text this afternoon, and I'm seeing Daddy's gallery. I don't know who is Daddy, but whosoever Daddy it is, I really appreciate all of you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, And uh, lastly, uh, I want to introduce the Reverend Garvan. Reverend uh, Garvan is a uh, uh, in the Bronx, Bronx, New York, and uh, he is the ACLC uh, leader, coordinator in the Bronx. Uh, Ryan Garban, just uh, say a few words and greet uh, everybody. Yes, uh, uh, good evening, uh, uh, Sister uh, Reverend Margaret. That was a beautiful message this night. You're very, God loves you so much, and uh, praise the Lord. I think, I think Lord Jesus. Uh, his tears were dried by your your heart of your message today, mm -hmm. especially about uh, contentment uh, through through godliness. You know, it's like I, I I have to really repent. I have to repent because I think as a pastor, something is missing in our ministry yet that we have not reached the heart of many people who want. Many of you talked about greed, or you talked about possession but why is that what 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 did have they not learned our sister talked especially our sister talked about learning the desire of god the desire of god is like what does god need right now everybody thinks god doesn't need anything but by your message i really felt that there was so much love in your message that god what god has off to offer is love but the world doesn't want to sacrifice. See, when you mention sacrifice, when Jesus said, if you want to be in my steps, you must deny yourself. You must take up the cross, and you must follow me. Now, and, and when he said deny yourself right away, people went, no, 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 not me, not me. I can't do it. But somehow or other, as pastors, it's our, it's, it's our, it's our calling to inspire people that you will gain from denying yourself. You will gain from sacrificing. You you will you will grow. As our sister said, you you started out work on ourselves to be a better Christian. You opened that up today, and that's beautiful because I think that yeah God yeah, wants us to make the choice. People can, they want the desire that they want God. They cannot be forced. They cannot be no more by fear, by love. And, and, and you know, all the pastors here, and I'm glad to see uh, Oladipo today, my brother, and uh, all of you. We love you. And we really, the key to 
secret is true love and the lifestyle of prayer as Reverend Moon and, and Mother Moon have really they've insisted and told the members when you get up in the morning you go to bed at night thank God thank God thank God love you everybody thank you. Love Amen. Amen. We love you, sir. We appreciate you, Reverend Garland. We want uh, our the man of our man of God from Canada. Please pray for us. Pray for us. Then, okay. Uh, Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we want to thank you. We want to bless you. We want to thank you for this gathering. We thank you for this maiden edition. We bless your name. We thank you for as many that received the invitation and joined and partake in this event. We are praying that the blessings that we have re received will not elude us in the name of Jesus. Amen. And these words will not be required of us on the last day in the name of Jesus. Amen. We will all receive it well, and you all continue to do this meeting well in the name of Jesus. Amen. We pray people from the north, from the east, from the west, from the south of Amer North America, Nigeria, and the world continent to know about this event in the name of Jesus. Amen. I know a little bit, I know much about my sister, I know she can minister well, so let's I pray that we we'll tell others so that they can come and enjoy these impartations in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we thank you. We bless you. Thank you, Lord. We thank you for the time we have spent. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you. It's a well-spent time. Thank we you, thank Father. you for the rest of the day. Thank that you, Lord. You go now, you will go with us in the name of Jesus. Amen. You will keep us to the next time. Thank Amen. you, everlasting Father. Thank, Thank you, Thank you, you all for the supporters of this program. Thank the you, Lord Father. enrich you and Amen. empower you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen.